What's up, y'all? It's me, it's your boy Asmigold, and today we're going to look at a solo glory of the Dragon Soul Raider. Now, the first boss we're going to be doing here is Heroic Morchok, and uh, there's going to be two achievements associated with this one, but the Don't Stand So Close to Me achievement will be automatically awarded to you as long as you solo the boss fight, and that's just the way it goes. Heroic Morchok, however, is also extremely easy to do. I'm doing this on 10 man heroic, and he pretty much splits into two. Focus down and kill uh, Morchok as soon as possible. As soon as he splits into two, pop off your cooldowns, and uh, if you have any things like Blade Storm or whatever, uh, you can use it on the two of them, and it will do a lot more damage because the damage isn't really like their health isn't really shared, but it's kind of shared. They kind of like re, uh, they always have the same health, so they kind of like re, uh, I don't know, like evaluate each other's health and kind of give the other one health or take health from away from the other one. And so Blade Storm obviously will do double damage, double the effective damage that it would on a single target fight on a Heroic Morchok. And also you want to be able to use your cooldowns for stomps. But that's really all you have to do for Heroic Morchok. It's extremely easy. I'm not really going to talk too much about that. The next one is War Ward Zanaz. We're going to be doing this on Heroic at the same time as doing the Ping Pong Champion. Now the Ping Pong Champion achievement requires you to... Uh, be hit by the Void of the Unmaking ten times, like volley it back and forth, uh, ten times before it hits Warlord Zanaz. The way it works is that if it doesn't, if you're, if there's not a player nearby, whenever it becomes active, because uh, I'm, I'm running on top of it and just standing right on top of it, back and forth, and that's the way you want to do it. It will always prioritize a player over Warlord Zanaz, but if there's not a player there, it will hit him and trigger the second phase of the encounter. This is a two-phase encounter, and it goes, you know, phase one, phase two, phase one, phase two. And so uh, the thing is here is that Warlord Zanaz is going to do extra damage and more damage. Uh, he like gets a uh, stacking like buff that just makes him do more damage basically. And so uh, you want to be using your cooldowns, especially whenever the Void gets to uh, gets to higher stacks, because it also does more damage to you with the uh, the Void the, the damage of the explosion of the Void. And so you want to be paying attention to that and also making sure that you use cooldowns at the end here, because obviously. And you guys can do this. See, there you go. As you guys saw, I, I hit him with the uh, with the Void Ball because I was a little bit farther away from it. And he has 10 stacks, and so that means the uh, criteria for this achievement has been completed. The difference between Normal Mode and Heroic Mode is that on Heroic Mode, all of these adds that spawn, like the Claw and like the Tentacles and all that stuff, they're all killable. Like, you have to actually kill them, and that's what you had to do during progression. But now they don't really do all that much damage. And so what you really want to do is pretty much focus all of your damage and focus all your cooldowns for as soon as he hits his... Uh, second phase and then just burn them down as fast as possible and ignore the tentacles. You can also do the ping pong champion achievement on normal mode if you're having trouble doing it at the same time as doing heroic. It's not really that big of a deal and you will have to come back here multiple weeks anyway to finish the chromatic champion achievement which is the deathwing achievement. Now for your Saj, uh, here like I just kind of wanted to show off and I just pulled all the trash but if you do pull him without pulling the, uh, the globs then that's uh, you might have some trouble if you're under geared. I tried to do that on my hunter who's like really shitty and uh, not a not a good time. And so what you have to do with your Saj is that there's a, obviously the heroic part of the encounter pretty much with that. The only difference there is that he summons four adds instead of five as you can see. He's summoning four different colored adds. And taste the rainbow is you have to make sure that different color and uh, uh, type of adds hit him at the same time. And so I think there's like ones like purple and, and black, black and blue red and green, I think it's like yellow and black or something, yeah, black and yellow, because I remember there's the, the, the Wiz Khalifa song, I remember that, <laughs> but um, either way, uh, so you have to have all these hit them, now this actually, this achievement is actually easier to do in a way on Heroic, because with four globules spawning, it makes it a lot easier for, I don't know, I guess, for each one, obviously, to, uh, for the combination you want to spawn, because there's, uh, you know, a higher chance, of, or more globs spawning, aka giving you a higher chance, now, I guess since uh, I'm going to show this entire thing, I'm going to speed it up in a couple of seconds here because it did kind of last a while because I, I got like three of the combos or something like that on like the first one, and then like the rest of them just took me forever. Now, your size does a pretty good amount of damage, but the damage isn't too uh, too insane that you can't really kind of ne negate it. Um, I have second wind, and so whenever I go under 35% health, um, I gain 10% life leech, and so whenever I have that, uh, I can just pretty much do one whirlwind and heal myself to full. And so that's really nice. Uh, if you have any sort of life leech gear, you should definitely use that to kind of keep yourself alive during this. And of course, if you bring a healer, uh, you can do that too. Or if you're a tank, you can heal yourself. Uh, or a healer, you can heal yourself. Uh, the forgotten one adds those spawn whenever you are, you have a, uh, the whenever a red, no, a yellow, uh, yellow globule hits your Sage. And if a black globule hits your Sage also at the same time as a yellow one, 
two sets of ads will spawn and not just one set. Uh, if the blue um, if the blue one hits him, what's going to happen is he's going to spawn a mana void, and the mana void is not really going to do anything super special. Uh, pretty much all it does is it just takes away all your mana, and you need to wait for it to take away all your mana to take you down to zero mana. Then you kill it, then it gives you all your mana back, and so don't worry too much about that. It's kind of annoying, but it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, let's see, the purple, the black one, I said before, it spawns the adds. The green one just puts that pools around, that, that like kind of, I don't know, like green thing around him, or around like the outside, like not during, not in the water, and it also hits, sometimes it hits players, I think like when used to hit players. It was more of a big deal, like the red and the green like don't really matter anymore because those were only like really relevant during progression. But as you can see, this can be kind of annoying to do because you're like just kind of sitting here waiting for the correct combination. And so green and red was the last combination that I needed. Green and red was always like the hardest one to do. I remember that. It was a real pain in the ass. And so uh, now it's not at all. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Don't be intimidated. But uh, as you can see, um, I pretty much stayed alive the entire time. Like the main thing that you're going to be worrying about with this achievement, especially if you're doing it on normal, is making sure that you do all of the different combinations uh, without hitting the enrage timer. Now, if you do one combination one week and you do the other three in another week, you'll still complete the achievement, but you have to do all of them on the same character. And so make sure that you know that, and so you're not wasting your time. Not like saying, oh, I have this on other character, no, they're not going to combine. The meta achievement combines, and so you can do like, I don't know, Heroic Morshock on one on one guy, and then Heroic Zanaz on another one, and like, they will both combine for the Glory of the Dragon Soul Raider. But uh, other than that, uh, you're gonna kind of have a little bit of trouble there. Uh, so for this one, this is the hard one, guys. This is holding hands. A lot of people ask me about this one. You have to have a pet. If you don't have a pet, you can't do it, okay? Um, I don't know if Warlocks can, like, teleport, but Warlocks have a pet anyway, so it wouldn't even matter. But uh, either way, so what you have to do here is make sure that you have Agara. Um, make sure that the Lightning is on her, uh, her axes. If she has Lightning on her axes, her first phase is going to be the Lightning phase. If she has Frost on her axes... Her first phase is going to, as you can see, there's my item level. Don't be intimidated. It's real fucking easy. I'm only level 90 when I'm doing this, too, uh, if you're watching this on Wars of Drain Art. And so anyway, uh, as soon as the, uh, lightning, the, uh, the lightning phase starts, uh, there's going to be four different pillars. And you want to do this on normal mode because more pillars spawn on heroic, and it just becomes more of an issue. Now, as soon as the first one becomes activated, you want to get to the maximum range. And then as soon as you get to the maximum range, you put your pet on stay on that exact area. So it's kind of linking up to your pet. And you're just kind of moving just back and forth, just right there, perfectly right there. And like this is going to take me, like this is like, I felt like the biggest idiot because I couldn't figure this out. And I decided to leave this in the video because I wanted you guys to see my trial and error here and see what I did wrong. And so hopefully you guys will understand. You have to make a clear, perfect line between you, the pet, and then the other conduit, okay? So don't uh, don't try and do this like this because I tried to curve it around the circle and that's why I didn't have enough, uh, I didn't have enough room okay with the conduit and I was trying to disengage like I think I tried some other like stupid shit and make sure that you're not standing on top of your pet too because the feedback between you and your pet from the conduit is going to make you take a lot more damage and it's going to kill you like I actually wiped on this once because I made that mistake and so make sure that you don't do that and again like you can always bring a friend for this too but it, this is a solo guide so I figured I'd show you guys you know how to solo it but uh, you do have to have a pet or uh, have a pet to actually uh, correctly solo this but as you can see it's also very important to kind of have a um what's it called a self heal in in one way or another because there is a lot of damage like a hunter is the optimum class to do this because they have spirit bond and spirit bond is a dot heal or you know it just like heals you for a percentage of your health every i don't know like five seconds i don't even remember but either way it just makes it a lot easier and so uh, i think that yeah I, I think i'm getting pretty close to figuring it out here but uh, as I said before, uh, you have five minutes in this phase, and so if you're going to derp around like me, you're going to have no problem. You're still going to get it done. It's going to be not even an issue. And see there, I was like, trying to do it like just a little bit, but yeah, this is like this is a really annoying achievement to do, and it's even it was even more annoying like to do uh, with um, with people in like whenever it was current. It was just absolutely awful. There, see, that's when I figured it out. That's when I figured it out right here. This is where I was like, yo, I think I'm doing something wrong. And uh, this is where I'm going to get it. And so people might tell me that you need to have uh, four players for this or something like that, or all ten players for this. That was changed. And so please do not tell me that. Uh, that actually was changed. And so you do not need to do that. 
as you can see there you go as soon as you complete the last one you automatically get the achievement and so for whatever reason if you don't get the achievement whenever you complete this phase you know that you did it wrong and you know that you need to wipe and retry it again after that you just burn her down or you cannot burn her down you just fucking run out of the instance and you're done if that's the last one you need but as you can see this is very easy to do now I will show you guys heroic mode as a uh, as my warrior just because uh, you know it is part of the I guess the thing and I want you guys to see what's going on now heroic mode the best way to do this is to burn her down now as I said before um, you want to make sure that she has the uh, frost axis because if she has the lightning axis you either have to burn her down before she goes into her first uh, her first transition phase or you have to kind of have a pet because there's no way that you can do this solo without a pet and I tried it with my warrior like heroic leaping and you know doing all kinds of weird stuff maybe if I had some kind of like a lag hack I'd be able to do it but uh, other than that I wouldn't now I am going to go through one uh, frost transition to show you guys the uh, problems I go through now the uh, frost she's going to put a debuff on me that's going to lower my speed and it's going to make me like pretty much rooted into the ground now luckily because I'm a warrior I have two different ways to get out of that. I have blade storm and I also have my human trinket or my uh, human racial which functions as a PvP trinket. And so if you're doing this you might want to equip a PvP trinket so in case you do get that debuff you can just go ahead and uh, use your trinket to get out of it. And there's a lot of other things that break it. Uh, it's basically any sort of a slow and so there are a lot of things in the game that take you out of slows or uh, you know, get slows off you and they're called like frost flakes. Now these, uh, these like lightning walls they used to one shot you but now they don't really do anything. As you can see there, it's slowing me down, and I just use my trinket, and it's no problem, right? And so you want to pretty much just run around the edges of the room and kill those. And again, if you get the lightning phase, you're fucked. And so that kind of sucks, but that's just the way it is. And so anyway, we're going to go over to Altraxian. Now, I'm going to do Altraxian, I guess, like two and a half times here, guys. Now, the first time here, I'm going to be doing this with my Hunter, because Altraxian, this is before the Hunter buffs, by the way. And so Hunters were absolute dog shit. And so, like, if I went back there and did it now, like, I'd probably have no trouble, but I spent, like, I don't know, like, a half hour wiping to this, and for me, that's kind of a lot. Not that I'm, like, amazing or anything like that, it's just I have a really low attention span for wiping on, on old content. And, uh, so anyway, uh, pretty much what you want to do here is you pretty much just want to burn Ultraxium down as much as possible. Um, for the achievement, Minutes to Midnight, uh, what you have to do is you have to pretty much kill Ultraxium before he casts, um, Hour of Twilight the second time because if he casts it, um, you can't get hit by Hour of Twilight uh, more than once and uh, complete the achievement. And so also if you use the uh, fading out debuff or the the extra action button thing where it takes you out the uh, to the other realm, what will happen is that he'll kill all the aspects. Now the thing with heroic here is that if you if you even cast minutes to midnight or sorry uh, Hour of Twilight once, he'll kill you because there has to be at least two players uh, active and. Um, I guess like fighting him and being hit, getting hit by Hour of Twilight in 10 man heroic mode. And so what you want to make sure that you do is it just make sure that you burn him down before that even happens. Now I'm going to show you guys what happens because I didn't know that this was the case. And so I'm actually going to add in the clip where I found out that that was the case because I think that you guys should probably know about this. So this next clip is going to be me doing heroic here on my warrior and I'm just sitting here. And so this, I'm going to be, this is the first Hour of Twilight and this is what happens if he hits an Hour of Twilight whenever you're doing heroic mode. Now this doesn't happen in normal, but uh, either way, even on normal mode, you have to kill him before the second hour of Twilight, or you will obviously fail the achievement. And so as you can see, he starts casting Twilight Eruption. I was like, oh shit, that's not good. And so I try and burn him down. He didn't even finish the cast. He was like 90, 95%, but I know that wasn't a finished cast because I've seen like a thousand of them. And so I know that even if you do kill him within the time that they cast it, you will still die. And so anyway, um, I'm going to show you guys the actual kill that I did with Altraxian Heroic. And also, if you burn him down, you'll also get minutes to midnight. But uh, if you do have problems with that, you can always, I guess, like bring a friend or something. Altraxian Heroic does a lot of damage. Uh, luckily for a warrior, this is really not a big deal, though. Mm. i take a drink. Talking a lot. So this is, this is me trying to charge Altraxian. Didn't work, okay? He, he wasn't going to have it. So I had to jump in there, right? So the, the strategy for this boss is you just pop every fucking cooldown you have and burn him down. Uh, there's really no, I guess, like specific things that you should or shouldn't do. Uh, just make sure you do as much damage as possible, as fast as possible, and kill him as soon as you can. And then he's dead. And he also drops a mount, which is cool. And um, 
I guess the, the only mom, the only model in the game that used that mount was take, taken away since they uh, got rid of UBRS. Well, either way, um, we're gonna go over the deck defender. Now, deck defender is like what I would like define as a cock in the ass to do as melee. Okay, and so you really want to have a range class in order to solo deck defender. And what you want to do here is that the uh, the twilight ambushers, the uh, the smaller drakes that drop off the uh, the melee ads. They shoot these uh, these like different what are they called twilight barrages and so what you want to do is you want to kill these kill these fucking drakes before they even have a chance to do it and so already be targeting and being ready for them and so as soon as they come into range you kill them as soon as possible and so watch I'm not going to have any of them even spawn on the screen because they're already dead and so this makes this uh, this achievement extremely easy to do is range and so you kill them before they even fly away and even get a chance to hit them. Now, if you're doing this as melee, the problem is obviously you're not able to kill them until they're uh, harpooned down. And so you guys will see that because I'll be doing this on heroic mode also with my warrior to show any differences. But there really are hardly any, but I just did, you know, want to show you guys what's going on. And so anyway, um, besides that, uh, if you do get a, um, a Twilight Barrage, uh, it's just like a smaller pink swirl. Now, as you guys know, that there's a larger Twilight, uh, the, the larger swirls, which are the Twilight Onslaughts. These are just Twilight Barrages, and they're a lot smaller, and so don't really worry about them too much. But if you let one hit the uh, hit the actual ship, and see here's the second wave. There's going to be three waves of these, by the way, three waves of ambushers. And as you can see, I'm getting in the Twilight Onslaught, and then there's the ambusher. And he's almost dead, and so I might have to soak one of these, uh, one of these different, um, what's it called? No, I guess I didn't have to. Okay. And so this is the best way to do it. Obviously, um... If they're dead, they can't be casting any Twilight Garages, and so this is like a best case scenario. Uh, any range class can easily do this. Uh, I think maybe even a Death Knight could do it with diseases, but um, you pretty much really don't want to do this with a warrior. Like, that would just be. I, I tried doing it, I tried soloing Deck Defender as a warrior. Not a good time, guys. Not a good time. I definitely would not recommend that. And so, besides that, uh, you pretty much always want to be killing the Sappers and pretty much doing everything that the uh, fight usually requires. And the uh, only real difference between normal and heroic is there's going to be like fire on the ground, and you have to fight Gariona. And so again, here I am turned around, I'm going to show you guys this real quick, turned around waiting for these dragons to spawn because I was like, alright, I just got through two waves, you know, I really don't want to have this fucked up now. And they're not even going to shoot down a uh, Twilight Barrage until after they drop off these guys. And so after I killed this thing, I'm pretty much home free, I've just completed the achievement, right? Because only six drakes spawn as long as you kill the... Uh, as long as you kill them before the next set of, uh, of the waves do. But in the, in the normal, I guess, like, I don't know, like, the way the fight works normally, only six sets of Drake spawn. Now, whenever Warmaster comes down, uh, he puts Sunder Armor on you, which kind of does a lot of damage. And he also does Shockwave. Shockwave, he just channels it on you, and you just don't stand in front of it. It's real fucking easy. Garyona also puts down purple stuff. Has there ever, ever been a thing in the game that you stand in that's purple? I don't think so. So guess what, you don't stand in this. But even if you do, it doesn't matter, because it, it does no damage. But either way, so there's Deck Defender. Just again, make sure that you kill the Twilight uh, Twilight Ambushers, the uh, Drakes that uh, fly in and drop the guys off, very quickly, as fast as you can, and you're going to have absolutely no problem with this, because if you can do it as a range, and I'm 514 item level, and I'm able to do this with absolutely no trouble. And so to put that into perspective... Now we're going to go ahead and do this on Heroic, and I'll show you guys the the, uh, the very minimal differences here. Now on Heroic, if you are doing this as melee, you want to make sure that you do soak as many Twilight Barrages as possible. And you can also do this on Heroic as a, as a ranged and do Deck Defender at the same time. It's just I wasn't sure if my Hunter would be able to do that because of how much trouble I had with Ultraxian Heroic. Or no, I, I had trouble with Ultraxian Normal Mode. And so I just pretty much wanted to make sure that it... Uh, it went down with no problem. But as you'll see here, see there's one of the Twilight Ambushes, or sorry, Twilight uh, Barrages that are going to spawn. As you can see, there's no way that you can get to all those as a melee because they're going all over the place and then you have to come and kill these Twilight Assault Drakes. Not Twilight Ambushes, Twilight Assault Drakes. And um, pretty much if you're having to kill those, you have to be in melee range of those and then they're shooting, uh, you know, as you can see, it's like, what are you going to do? Can I get to that one? No, you know, if this was the achievement, I would have just failed it, right? And now there's also fire on the deck, which is a heroic only mechanic, but it really doesn't matter. I think the fire does like like 40 damage or something like that, 180 damage, I don't even remember, it's like nothing. And so don't even really worry about the fire, but you do want to soak as many of the, uh, of the barrages as possible, just so you don't have any sort of, I don't know, like, uh, just any, anything bad happen. 
and because uh, if your uh, if your ship does reach zero health, as you can see on my top right area, on my on my UI, uh, there's like a little skybreaker thing. That's because if that ship reaches zero health, you fail the uh, fight. I guess like you no oh yeah yeah you get thrown off the edge. Man, I forgot all about that. But uh, as you can see, you do want to soak some of them. My uh, my health on the ship is pretty good, but it's not perfect. Yeah, actually, um, I had wanted to do this guide, like, this is something that I'd want to do, and I thought, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I thought that you needed to do Heroic Spine and Heroic Deathwing, but whenever I was doing more research for this before I actually went and made the video and did all the things to make sure I didn't forget anything, uh, I found that you didn't even need to do Heroic Spine, and so that was really good because I did totally did not have a video prepared for, uh, for today, and so that's really awesome that I've got this done, and now... I only have the where the fire lens radar, which I'm going to do everything updated for um, in 6.0, and then also where the cataclysm radar, which I'm kind of waiting for Nefarian lava to get nerfed. But even if it doesn't, I'm probably going to do a guide on that anyway, and just talk about a secondary strategy that I'm using for the uh, Nefarian achievement. But either way, I was just trying to take up some space because this is kind of pretty much repetitive. Uh, after this one, I'm pretty much just going to show the uh, the spine achievement. Now, you guys might have seen my spine, um, what's it called? My guide on how to solo a spine. This is going to be literally the exact same clip, guys. Literally the exact same clip. The only difference is I'm going to speed up most of it because I know a lot of you guys have seen it. And I'll also direct people to the, uh, to the full guide on how to do spine uh, if they had any questions or concerns or they didn't quite understand the way that I'm doing it in this video, and maybe the other video would help them. The difference between normal and heroic on uh, with Warmaster is that he shares health with Garyona. He doesn't really share health with her, but he like takes health away from her, and then Garyona comes down, and she uh, she like does the fight with him. Whenever she comes down, just like for me, I just blade storm fights over. Easy game, easy life, not even a big deal. Like uh, heroic Warmaster is extremely easy to do. Uh, Probably one of the, uh, definitely one of the easier fights in here, especially for being the sixth boss. But uh, anyway, I think we're almost to a uh, to a normal one spine. But again, guys, you do not have to do heroic spine or heroic madness, which is good because right now heroic spine is bugged. But uh, either way, uh, you definitely don't have to do heroic spine. Now the uh, the normal mode spine achievement here, what we're going to be doing here, is that we're going to be doing the achievement. Maybe he'll get dizzy, and uh, what that requires is you have to make Deathwing do a uh, combination of a left, right, left, right. Uh, roll and so I'm first getting here over here to the right. I kill all the uh, I kill all of the corruptions. Yeah, I kill all the corruptions, and then I pretty much just stand here and uh, just sit here. I, I kind of I have like a really like no uh, no mistakes possible strategy for this. And don't kill any of the bloods. And um, if you have your legendary cloak on or any sort of cleave available, you want to make sure that you don't have that uh, on either because what's going to happen is it'll accidentally kill the bloods and then. Uh, if you kill the bloods and it just it's a, b a bunch of problems and you don't want that to happen. And so as soon as the roll happens, you want to make sure that you have uh, deadly boss mods or big wigs for this. But also because if you don't, uh, you're just going to probably end up in the, end up with trouble because you don't really know exactly when he casts the roll. And then like, so you're moving out of it and uh, you know you're going to get uh, thrown off. And uh, if I didn't mention it, as you can see, I have that little tentacle buff, not the one with five minutes, but the other one there. Um, what that does is if you have that tentacle buff, you will not get thrown off by the roll. And so you need to make sure that uh, you have that on. And um, after you do the uh, left, right, left, right part, uh, the rest of the fight, the rest of the spine fight is exactly however the rest, yeah, however you want it to be. Like as long as you complete that one criteria, you can do the rest of the fight however you want and you'll get the achievement. Assuming that of course the way that you do the fight kills the boss. If you don't kill the boss, you don't get the achievement. And so anyway, as soon as he's going to do this last roll, I'm going to go ahead and go back to over to this uh, this front area, and I leave one corruption up. I don't do any damage to the corruption. And at this point, I'm pretty much just going to be standing here and waiting for bloods to spawn. And uh, whenever I have nine bloods that spawn, I'm going to go ahead and run over there and kill the corruption. And then I'm going to have the amalgamation spawn. I'm going to AoE down all the bloods. And as soon as I AoE down all the bloods, I'm going to run the corruption, sorry, the amalgamation that spawns after the corruption dies. It's kind of a kind of a little complicated, but it's, it's, I mean you understand it whenever you do the fight. Uh, as soon as you have you you run the amalgamation after if there's like the bloods leave like little pool under them, and so if you uh, run the amalgamation over nine bloods, the uh, amalgamation starts like exploding, I guess kind of, and um, whenever the amalgamation reaches zero health after exploding or like one percent or something like that, what he's going to do is he's going to pretty much like uh, like start pulsing this like. Uh, 
fire damage, and so this was like really deadly at a, you know, at level whenever this was like current, but not anymore. And he also does this nuclear blast. Now you don't really need to worry about running out for it. And as soon as you, he does the nuclear blast, you want to pretty much walk over to um, to the most nearby, I guess, like uh, part where the corruption died. And so you're rooted, and make sure that he dies on one side because uh, if he dies on the right side of Deathwing's uh, spine, he'll uh, prop up the uh, right, I guess, um, the right tendon. And uh, if he dies on the left side, he'll prop up the right, the left tendon. And so that'll make it a little bit harder to uh, to kill him. Now you can obviously like walk back and forth really fast uh, in the middle of Deathwing, but the problem with that, in my opinion, is that there are a lot of I guess things that can go wrong there because you can just like they can daze you. There's just a thousand things that can go wrong, as you can see. So I'm getting the second uh, the second amalgamation, and as soon as I get him uh, nine stacks, I kill him. I get nuclear blast. I get rooted down, and then as soon as the tendon comes up, I kill the tendon, and then I pretty much kill the two corruptions that are because uh, I mean obviously two will spawn, and I kill the one that are that are the two that are on the same side, and I leave the other one that was uh, on the other side alone. Uh, pretty much to do whatever and then I pretty much repeat the process until I get nine bloods and then I do it again and so you have to uh, break down three I guess of like Deathwing's plates and then the fight ends. Uh, this fight like I always liked this fight in a way it was like very tactical back in the day but now it's uh, kind of pretty much face roll it's not very hard at all but uh, either way um, yeah Heroic Spine was crazy and so as you can see all the bloods are there and then I just run the amalgamation right over them and uh, he gets nine stacks immediately. He casts nuclear blast, and then as soon as the thing pops up, I kill it. I don't even—I didn't even know it was there. It's dead. Okay. And again, so as soon as you do the, um, maybe he'll get dizzy. Part uh, that left, right, left, right, making him roll left, right, left, right. Then it's going to be done. It's going to be no problem, and that's all there is. Uh, if you don't, if you do heroic spine, if you do normal spine, you can't do heroic madness. And so what's going to happen here is for chromatic champion. What you have to do is you have to start the fight, the Deathwing fight. He'll start the as uh, assault aspects, and whenever you deal damage to each different wing tentacle, that will tell Deathwing which uh, aspect to assault. And so the aspect here that I'm next to right here, this is Caligos, and I'm going to jump back over to Ysira. Now the way that you have to do this is you have to start the fight and uh, kill the tentacle uh, on each different platform first. And so. You have to kill the Calgos one first, and then do the other three. You have to kill the Sira one. This is where I'm at here, and then do the other three. You have to kill the Nazdorma one, then then do the other three. The uh, the order in which you do the ones after the first one doesn't matter at all. Uh, the buffs that you get, the Calgos one is the hardest one to get. It was the hardest one because the Calgos one just gives you a flat damage buff. Um, the Sira one makes you do more healing, and it also makes you. Uh, it gives you like a, a, an ability to where like you can click it and take 50% less damage for a period of time. It's pretty good, but it's not like the best thing ever. Uh, if you also kill these things really fast, sometimes they don't spawn the corruptions, which is pretty cool. Or sorry, the uh, the tentacles, whatever behind them, and so that's awesome. And Nazdormu, what he does is he makes you attack faster. He gives you 20% attack haste, and he also uh, puts a time zone down. And the time zone, what that does is it's like it's kind of weird. It just slows the aluminium bolts, but if you do this fight the same way I do, you're not even going to know what the fuck those are. But if an aluminium bolt spawns, just turn around and kill it. It's not even hard. Uh, for anyone that's wondering, I will be doing uh, guides on how to do Heroic Spine whenever the uh, bug is fixed with it, and also how to see, uh, how to solo Heroic Madness for the mount, the Lifebinder's Handmaiden. And as you guys know, as soon as the uh, all four of the... Uh, of the tentacles are broken, Deathwing's head falls down. As soon as his head falls down, just pop every cooldown and burn him down. Ignore all the other mechanics and you should have really no trouble with it because you're going to have all four of the buffs from the aspects again. And so that's really all it takes. Like there's some kind of a bug here. I, I went so I went so big dick on him like he didn't even know what to do. He was shooting element and bolts at me and he's already dead, right? And so again, you can also get the Blazing Drake from here. And so I just did a video on that a couple days ago and so you guys might remember that. But that's pretty much all it takes, and so if you get all these achievements... Oh, by the way, uh, you have to do Chromatic Champion over the course of four weeks, and it has to be all in the same character. And so the uh, progress isn't shared between the four characters, but the achievement itself is. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much all it takes to get the uh, glory of the Dragon Soul Raider. Thanks a lot for watching, and like, comment, subscribe.